So with this, we come to the closure of day two of the summit. It was indeed a wonderful deliberation of two days, and I'm sure each one of us will be going back with some key takeaways. The enriching presentations by each and every presenter were thoughtfully put together, and that brings us closer towards achieving Vision 2050 for sure. With this, I, on behalf of the organization committee, would like to thank the esteemed panelists, chairs, co-chairs for extending their time towards this two-day summit. Like they say, onwards and upwards. With this, uh, we would now like to showcase a message by Honorable Sri Hardeep Singh Puri, Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas. Now to deliver, uh, uh, now we have the summit takeaways. May I request uh, Mr. Joydeev Lahiri, EDDGH, to take upon the stage, please. A very good evening to Amanat Sir, Additional Secretary, uh, Additional Secretary, Exploration Ministry of Petroleum, uh, Mr. Onurak Sharma, Director on Shore ONGC, and Ambassador Sir, uh, who, who is being also agreed to be a part with us uh, witness our closing ceremony. The two-day summit is coming to its end after the after we have the closing address from C. Onurak Sharma, Director on Shuru NGC, and validity address from Mr. Amarnath, IES, Regional Secretary MOP. Before summing up the second summit, uh, first of all, I offer my sincere thanks to the all 70, 70 members team of, of monitoring committee who brought out a brilliant report uh, which has been uh, which has been well uh, well praised by DGDJ, the National Secretary MOPNG and Minister of State uh, State Petroleum Natural Gas, Mr. Telly, and who advised MOPNG, DGH, and all operators to implement the recommendation made in the first in the uh, in the report of the after the first summit. I thank hard efforts put forward by all our organizing committee uh, all our organizing committee members of 46. 46 member team who were actively for last few months to give shape of the second edition of the summit. I also thank the 24 members of our steering committee for guiding us during the during the review meeting we had with them, as well as as well as time to time during the all preparatory works. I thank I thank Mr. Social Family, the Secretariat for our team ahead for a nice platform they created for this year's virtual summit, which has been praised by you all. I will fail on my duty if I do not acknowledge the support, guidance, motivation given by our mentor, Sri Amanath sir. Also, we are thankful for support extended by DGDGH, CMDOL, CMDONGC. As told by DGDGH and Additional Secretary MOPNG, we are committed to pursue for implementation of the recommendations, recommendation report in the first report, and we'll come up with another report after the second summit. And we again, we again bestow the responsibility to, to Mr. Social Friendly to form the team and, and to come up with another report after the second edition. As advised by Regional Secretary MOPNG, I announced here that 
we are going to have another have another physical workshop on 11th of May 2022, and it it is titled as Exploration Opportunities in Bay of Bengal, which is suggested, and we have started to intimate, intimate you. We have already framed the team, and soon we'll come to you and discuss. As many people was insisting this year to have a physical summit, but we found that this is the best option to get the best speakers. And next year, even if we plan for physical meeting, we'll have hybrid model so that those can't join physically can participate online. Ramanat sir, in his inaugural address, uh, address commented that after his summit, one day is going to be established one of the one of the uh, one of the leading event across the globe. In this context, sir, we would like to appraise that in first edition we had we had six thousand plus participants, and and in and, and this edition we had we had ten thousand plus participants. Under under your mentorship and guidance by uh, by our senior members like Malik Saab, Mr. Sakwar Saab, Patel Saab, Pinak Saab, Chawla Saab, Sushmita Sushma Madam, Rajiv Gori Boss, Anand Gupta Saab, Reddy Saab, Interesting Nayak Boss, and and many others, uh, many, many others, we, we, may, we could make it happen. This time we have actively associated ENP, ENP division of Gale, IOCL, NRL, and IGGL to our, uh, to our event to strengthen our, uh, strengthen our venture, venture. To keep the journey going to us, uh, towards the vision 2050, Amanat sir, uh, as, you, uh, as you mandated, to include youths and women in the group. I'm happy to inform that out of the 46 members of the organizing committee, 60% of them are youth and women members. Roadmap of, uh, roadmap of upstream sector, uh, we have already well taken care in, in our first report. And this year, we tried to grab the best practices globally so that we can plan to elevate our, ourselves to that level, apart from apart from discussion on various other sessions, such as extraterrestrial exploration for unleashing hydrocarbon potential uh, in, in mature and frontier basin, Exploration and production of unconventional hydrocarbon in Indian basin, expeditious, expeditious monetization of discovered field, maximizing recovery factor in producing field, making India an attractive investment destination, discussion on evolving global energy outlook, outlook scenario for which just we had prior to this event, which was a very interesting, interesting session. This session we have given full trust. Uh, 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 full trust on, on digital technology in the ENP sector, and which uh, Amanat sir uh, had, uh, had told us on during our review meeting on 26 February that uh, this is the arena you have to give trust. So time was this time short. So many members have suggested we can have another session on, on digital technology. And, and, and we had also given trust this time to have a, uh, have a roadmap for the country about the disasters uh, course where the professor and the head of NIDM was there today, and uh, director of TNFS ONGC, and uh, we had uh, we had EDUSD, we had uh, we had Mahavarsaf. So we have uh, we are going to give a roadmap that how country can tackle the future disaster in oil blowout and all. And regarding the HID panel session we had on the uh, about the reforms uh, reforms regulations and the skill set development development, and we'll also come out with a report with that one. The, uh, to have India, uh, to have Indian in the Indian ENP sector, uh, we had a session, a very interesting session. So lastly, uh, lastly, with due permission of the House, I would like to announce the date of the third summit is, uh, is 10th and 11th February 2023. Uh, it is on Friday and Saturday. So I, I wish this now I request, uh, request uh, I hand over the mic to Chandima, please. Thank you, Mr. Lahiri. Thank you for your uh, really valuable words. And now to deliver the closing address, may I call upon Mr. Anurag Sharma, Director Onshore ONGC. Our uh, respected additional secretary exploration, Amanaji, uh, respected Mr. Ahmed, Mr. Larry, and all other participants, a very good evening to all of you. First of all, uh, let me compliment the organizers of the summit for the successful second edition. Uh, 
it was held in February, as I recall, last year, and it has been successful this year as well. More than 6,000 participants and and uh, uh, many sessions, uh, which covered almost the entire gamut of uh, ENP activities. So my compliments to the entire team under the guidance of DGDGH and additional secondary exploration for the successful second edition. And as you said, more editions are going to come. And I would also like to say the, the message of uh, Honorable Minister, it perhaps sums up uh, the path which is to be taken by us. I have jotted down a few points which I would like to share. Um, uh, there have been very interesting discussions. I was listening to the discussion just previous to this session as well. Uh, some of uh, the points which would be a rather a reiteration of what has been discussed. Uh, the first one being, as we all know, uh, the pandemic has changed uh, the way we do business and especially in the ENP sector. There is a lot of volatility, uh, the spike in oil, gas and other commodities prices and the geopolitics has further added to this volatility. Uh, the second point is, as we all know, we are one of the fastest growing economies and we are also the third largest consumer of energy in the world. Primary, primary energy consumption has also doubled since 2000 and approximately 38% energy needs are being met by oil and gas. Then the growing urbanization, rising population and demand of petrochemicals will continue to require huge amount of oil and gas. So therefore, uh, there has been a lot of discussion, but there is no doubt that oil and gas is expected to be relevant for us for at least next three to four decades. However, the challenge for us is to meet the demand from our own resources as much as possible. And this is going to be uh, the topic which I would be touching upon today. Uh, we have uh, expanded our exploration footprint and uh, this is the focus area for us uh, and that for the times to come. We are focusing on lesser explored basins uh, as uh, uh, you would be aware that we have been successful in putting the eighth producing basin on the country's hydrocarbon map with commencement of oil production from Bengal Basin. And recently we got another success in the form of Hatta 3 when we struck gas in the Indian Basin, so which adds another basin with proved hydrocarbon potential. So we are very confident that Indian basins hold a lot of promise, a lot of untapped potential. The last uh, resource re-estimation which was carried out uh, indicated that 41.8 billion ton of oil equivalent of prognosti prognosticated resource base of which 12 uh, billion ton oil equivalent has been discovered, so which leaves 29.8 in YTF uh, resources. Coming to the basin, Kambay Basin uh, is perhaps the most efficiently explored basin with about 70% of the prognosticated resources assessed. Mumbai offshore basin has also been explored well. Among uh, the other major producing basins, Assam basin is high in terms of drilled well density. However, only 30% of the resources have been appraised. The majority of the prognosticated resources in the other basins remain undiscovered, and there are valid reasons for that. Um, because of the uh, difficult place, tight sands, HPHD, and also uh, gas market also has played a role in that. So the, the point of discussion for us is that in spite that we have an assured market, we have vast sedimentary basins, and we have had major uh, policy reforms like marketing and pricing freedom for gas produced from deep water, ultra deep water, HPHD fields. There have been incentives for exploration in explored basins. There has been a discovered small scale policy. The potential of Indian sedimentary basins has not yet been optimally realized. So therefore, there is a serious need to put in all our efforts to increase domestic investments and at the same time try to analyze why our basins are not attracting foreign investor interest. Another point uh, which I would like to touch upon would be about the discussion around energy transition and which has also started to impact our business. 
So there is a competition for scarce capital with many geographies. So we have to be uh, uh, careful about that aspect as well. Then we also ought to realize that category one basins alone cannot sustain Indian ENP industry for long. Exploration needs to fan out to newer basins, category two and three basins. But to, for that, we need to provide a credible and adequate knowledge base that is good enough to arrive at a clear risk reward perception. The government has come up uh, with various reforms, focus on simplification of procedures, facilitating faster discovery, award of exploration accreditations through OLP, doing away with revenue share commitment in category two and three basins. These are some of the forward looking measures that should spur new investment and induction of cutting it cutting edge technology to enhance the recovery of hydrocarbons. Another area for us to ponder is a uh, lot of resources which have been locked up in tight and deep reservoirs. So these require technology induction. These are cost intensive. Uh, oil price volatility. Operators at times hesitate to invest in such fields because this is a resource that is difficult to drill, evaluate, test, stimulate and produce, especially during low oil prices. So for this, uh, I have a suggestion. Uh, if you look at a balance of uh, regulatory framework and uh, uh, inviting uh, investments, so the important point which would encourage this would be an enabling regulatory framework which would promote ways of doing business. So this would be a differentiating factor for success in upstream oil industry. As we also see that world has begun to see a limited time scale for exploitation of fossils. So the upstream operators today want certainty and clarity in policies for reduced business cycles. So going ahead, perhaps enabling provisions like perhaps uh, reduction in duties and pricing freedom, particularly in difficult fields and category two and three basins. Uh, this would help in a positive investment environment. So to conclude, I would like to say that we have a target of becoming a five trillion economy through technological, economic and strategic measures. So this will focus on quick wins, shorter time and monetization of discoveries and increased digitalization. We will have to work on a mission mode to increase domestic production by supportive policies and incentives to encourage domestic and foreign operators to unleash the production potential of Indian sedimentary basins. So with this, uh, I once again compliment the organizers and uh, the mentorship of AAC and DGTGS for successful organization this summit and also all the participants who participated actively and enriched this event. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful words. Uh, now to deliver the closing address, may I please call upon Mr. Anurag Sharma, director. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, now to deliver the valedictory address, uh, may I please call upon Mr. Amarnath, IAS, additional secretary, Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas. Thank you, uh, Ambassador Ahmed, Mr. Sharma. Mr. Lairi and all distinguished participants. At the outset, let me congratulate the organizers for successfully completing the second edition of Upstream Ahead. The importance of these events has increased a lot in last one year. If you see what is happening in the world, the importance of energy for us, the energy security for India has increased a lot. And we need to focus on our own resources 
if we have to successfully develop our economy, if we have to become $5 trillion economy, we have to have more domestic resources. We just can't rely on unstable foreign energy sources. So importance of this event has increased a lot since last year. It is very important that how a event it started. These events are like trees. How do you plant them and how do you nurture initially? The quality of this event or its success or its sustainability will depend how you do in initial periods. And I'm happy that by completing the second edition in a much better version than the last year, you have established that you have the potential to go forward and contribute to the domestic production of energy. But whenever any tree is planted, its qualities are visible for the rest of the life. So I'll urge that this event should also have a brand of its own. It should not be like any other event. Every day, a lot of events are taking place. And especially when we have online versions, a lot of events are taking place every day. So how do you distinguish yourself? I think there are two important things which uh, this event should be marked by. One is that it is driven by the people. It's not a government event. It's not a particular company event. It's driven by the professionals. So I think the, that is the first thing that people are driving the events and they should be its force. And the second quality which I will say that this even should imbibe is the results. Whatever happens in the conversations which take place over a period of two days, what was discussed there? What is the takeaway? And how do we implement that? Now I heard partly the last session. The discussions were very enriching. What do we take away from that? My suggestion will be just write down all these things, make reports of these things. And maybe you can again get in touch with the speakers that we want to implement it, how to do it. I think they will be more than happy to contribute to this. So two events become important, two qualities. That's a people driven and result focused. And if you are focusing on the results, then monitoring becomes important. You had set up a monitoring committee last time, and again, uh, consisting of the participants themselves. Let them focus on the takeaways. Let's see how these are implemented. Convey to the respective stakeholders. So monitoring committee becomes important. And for monitoring committee to work, you must have a regular platform. I'm sure you had developed a app for this purpose. And I'll request that that app should be disseminated amongst all. And it can become a platform for the people to interact. They can collaborate amongst themselves. If there is an issue, they can take up with the government. So monitoring coming on a platform will greatly help in achieving the objectives. And uh, when you hold the next event, maybe what has happened over the period of time, you can issue a kind of report. Like uh, we have in the budget sessions before the budget is announced, one day before there is an economic survey, so which encapsulates the, the status of economy, 
over the period gone by. So maybe like this, you can release a report before the event starts so that people can say what has been done, where it is uh, stuck up or what needs to be done so that it becomes a collaborative effort and it becomes a uh, one single source where your results can be seen and it helps in taking the things forward. And uh, you have already announced the dates and uh, that's a great way to go. And I will suggest that uh, maybe next time you have partly hybrid event and partly uh, physical and partly online. Maybe you can have a portion in Delhi, maybe people can assemble in Mumbai also and some people can participate. And I wish maybe after a few years, uh, it could be an event with, which is uh, which may be held, uh, held internationally also. So people can participate and give speeches online. Some people can assemble at different locations, discuss amongst themselves and uh, better results can be obtained. Indian diaspora, which is there around the world, they can also come together. There are a large number of professionals who are based in different countries. They can come together. Uh, and I, I can uh, tell from my own experience and Mr. Ahmed can also vouch that Indians working outside, they will be very, very keen to get involved in the events which are taking place in the country. But many a time they don't know how to participate, how to get uh, uh, into the system. So it can also become a platform, but longer vision. But right now it's time to focus on the current, develop it properly. And it, it has been a great event. And the just an idea which emerged last year, you have successfully taken it forward. And uh, there are great uh, opportunities for all of the professionals to participate in this and contribute to the growth of the nation by producing more energy, making India more reliant and self-sufficient and truly admirable. I thank you. All of you give me an opportunity for speak on this occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring words. With this, we come to the closing of the uh, closing ceremony today uh, in the second edition of the Upstream Ahead. Uh, so uh, just to let you know, you can download your digital certificates uh, from the menu that you will get uh, on the bottom of your screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, I wanted to let you know that uh, we have the cultural Sufi music night starting at 8 p.m. So I would request each one of you to please come to this forum at 8 p.m. for a beautiful cultural Sufi music night. On that note, thanks once again to each and every participant uh, for participating so beautifully and hope to see all of you very, very soon. Thank you.